Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a video on basic text formatting and effects that you could do in Microsoft Word um, using the Microsoft Word for uh, Windows. You should be able to transfer most of this information, if not all of it, whether you use a Mac or other operating systems, although you may have to look at slightly different places to find some of the tools. Now, instead of um, following along with the uh, uh, business technology essentials textbooks that I wrote. I'm just going to do general information in these videos that you can apply there. That way uh, I don't confuse you by doing a step out of order of what the book suggests. Instead, we'll show you the types of things you'll be learning to do so you can see how they're done. So what I've done is I've opened up a document here. It's basically full of a lot of nonsense. This is something called lorem ipsum, which is text greeking that uh, usually is Latin type of text that will be generated randomly. You could put in and it, often newspapers will put something like that in as a placeholder for where their articles will go until they wait for the final print copy to be available. You could do this here and I've, I've chosen to use this one using a combination of office ipsum, business ipsum and a couple of other things. This will give us a chance to practice with different effects with text later on with themes and page sizing and borders and all sorts of other things. But for this video, we're just going to work on basic text effects. Now, as I've indicated in the user interface video, uh, video you can go down to the lower right hand side and use the zoom to make a document bigger. Even so, let's take a look and see what we have. We just have a whole bunch of text. It's basically in what is known as the Microsoft Office default format. So it comes in in a text called Calibri and uh, 12 points. And um, it also comes in with a basic color palette set. So we're on the Home tab, which is what we'll do most of our stuff in this video on. One of the things we have access to is a font color. And when you click down, you'll see there's a color palette. It gives you all sorts of choices. We'll look at that a little later. But well, what are the basic things that you could do with text? First, of course, you could start typing um, anything that you want in here. So let's say, I'm going to call this by. You can indent, make it bigger, change the color, make it bold, and so on. Now, for folks who haven't got much familiarity with these kind of programs yet, let me show you just a couple of other basics. You can put your cursor anywhere, hold your left mouse key down, unless, of course, you've programmed your mouse to have your right key be your left key, and then hold it down and drag, and you can select things. So I'm, this is what I'm doing here. You can select from line to line. You can double click um, on a word to select the word, and you can triple click to select the paragraph. What do I mean by paragraph? This is clearly just two words, right? Well, this is actually what Microsoft considers a paragraph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on an icon up here that shows you and this is what is a paragraph symbol. So after this paragraph is over or this line of text is over, when you hit enter, you get this sort of thing. I leave this off usually, but it helps explain what Microsoft means by a paragraph, by each line of text that's coordinated. Now if you scroll down here, this is a whole paragraph. I've double texted, got one word, triple texted, got the whole paragraph. I'm going to turn this icon off now. So in here, what I want to do is just make this look a little bit easier to read, even though it's a bunch of nonsense that doesn't mean anything. It's actually kind of funny because these are things that you hear in offices and in meetings and from clients. And uh, so you might read through it and get a, a chuckle or two. I'm going to look here and do all this manually. I want to make this title, Office Ipsum, bigger. I want to make it stand out. And in the Home tab, what we have here are groups. Actually, you'll have groups in every tab. And the idea is that Microsoft tried to chunk types of commands together in ways that over the years of a lot of user experiences seem to make sense. So we have a font group, which touches all the things that you could do to a word, to a letter, to a paragraph. But you have paragraph. Um, a group here too, which has to do with spacing between paragraphs, how far apart they are from each other, whether they're left or right or center aligned, whether they're indented more, whether they um, have bullets and numbers in them. Styles will be handled in a different video. And this, some of these other things we're just not even going to worry about. The clipboard is really interesting. 
basically you've probably heard of copy and paste or cut and paste. You can select something. I just selected the whole line this way, or I could triple click and I could cut this and it disappears. And then I could paste it and it comes back. I could copy my name and then put my cursor somewhere else and paste. Just hit paste. And there it is. Oh, so many LJ baffles. Let's get rid of some. I could select a bunch and hit delete. Paste offers you the option of just keep the source formatting. I cut it and then I put it back. Another good one to know is keep text formatting only. So say you get a real, I'm just going to make a mess of something. I'm going to make it italicized and I'm going to make it. And it's like, I hate this. I could cut this and then I could come up here and I could paste this text only and it will put it back in like this. We'll learn other style changing things too. And one of them actually is this wonderful format painter, little paintbrush. I'm going to once again mess this up. I'm going to do some ugly things to it. And then I'm going to make it really huge. No, I said really huge. Oh, I have to select it here. Really huge. And I love this. I love this text. What you do with this format painter is you select the piece of text that is styled in a way you like. You select this brush once and it becomes kind of a darker gray. That means it's loaded with this style. Then I can come down and I can apply it to something else. And then it stops being gray. Now, what if I want to do this more than once in more than one place? You could double click it so that if you change it when it's done, it will still be gray. And then you can come down here and do all sorts of stuff. And this is really awful, isn't it? When you're done with it, you could turn this off. Now I'm going to show you another wonderful thing, and that is the undo. This is a really great um, keyboard shortcut you should remember. Control Z as in Zachary. That is the undo. And I'm going to use Control Z, and you notice how things are changing back to the way they were. And in Microsoft Word and Excel, I believe they've got it so that it can go backwards up to 100 steps. I will say, however, you want to be regularly saving things so that you are never 100 steps away from saving things. So another favorite keybind is Control S as in Save. And this will work if you've already got a document that you um, haven't uh, or that you've already saved in another location. If you come over here and you go to a blank document and you need to save it for the first time, you would go over to File, Save As. You would enter the file name here, New File. Then you would browse to find a location. I'm going to be very bad and I'm going to see if I can put it on my, um, my desktop just for convenience for this lesson. There I'm putting New File in the desktop. And I'll go with other files there and it will save it. Now, anytime I do any work here, all I have to do is save this because it has a location. I've just closed that file. So now let's play with the fonts and make this look nicer. We could change font faces. You can see all sorts of options down here. Let's see what this script looks like. Oh, and then we can also make the font size bigger. Yeah, Office Ipsum. We could change the color of it and pick something that's not necessarily bright red from this palette. You don't have to choose only these colors. You can also choose more colors. This will give you this little area where you could choose something like this really great royal blue or a lime green. Or you could go to custom and you can look through here and choose something on here that really speaks to you. Let's do that color. So you're selecting the text that you want to do. You can change the font size of it. You can make it italics with this U. You could make it, oh, that was, sorry, that wasn't an italics. That was an underline. Undo that, make it italics by LJ Bothell, keeping it the same size and make it bold. Another neat thing you could do is use something called bullets. So this is what is called a list. Versions include is telling you that there's going to be something included after this. And this is a list of items. These items can be made to stand out a little more by using the home tabs paragraph group and look for bullets and numbers. 
Numbers is what you would use if you're listing something in the order of importance, like steps. Step one, step two, step three, my very favorite, my second favorite, my third favorite. And bullets is what you would use if it doesn't really matter what order they're in. You just want them to stand out. Let's see what else we could do here. Let's take a look at this paragraph. So in this paragraph, we can, it is currently up here aligned left. And this is the home tab paragraph group. You can center it. You can make it right aligned. You could do something called justify, where technically it's aligned on both sides, but you may see some interesting spacing as the document tries to make it look really good that way. I'm going to go ahead and stick with left. But if I wanted to indent this more, I could use this icon up here for more indent, increase indent. I could decrease the indent. Now, here's a couple of other neat things we can do. If you want a background color to a line of text, you could come up here to the font group of Home, and you could use this highlighter. Now, a highlighter has only these colors. It doesn't actually allow you that palette of other great colors. So we could put something on there. And the thing to keep in mind, if you're going to use a highlighter, make sure it's got good enough contrast that a person can read it. So I'm going to come here and change the font to white and bold so it can be seen against that particular thing. But the thing is, it doesn't actually create a background color for the whole paragraph just for the specific lines of text. But what if I wanted Office Ipsum to have, say, a light pink background all the way across the top of the page? Instead, I would come over to the paragraph group and look at this paint bucket, which will allow me to paint a background color on it called shading. I'll click the down arrow, and again, I can see all of these choices. I could always pick a pale yellow. See the difference? This is not hot using the highlighter. This is using the highlighter. So in this case, I might make this a really strange looking title. And if I don't want the pale yellow, I can come back up to the paint bucket, and I can come down to more colors, and I can come into standard and look for a very pale pink, and there we go. So it's easy to do things like that. You can also add a line to things. We could do underline that would just underline the words. But what if you happen to want a whole paragraph underlined? That's why this is a different paragraph group here. You can go to this group. You can look at this little icon called borders. You can click down. You could choose something like bottom border. See what happens? Another thing you should be able to do, but let's take a look at it. The problem here is that you can't actually change the borders. You can come down here to borders and shading, but this may in fact actually take you, oh no, nope, it takes you right here, good. Sometimes when I click into it, I actually end up in the paint section, or like I accidentally choose draw table, or you know want to come in and, and, and do something else, and then I end up in the drawing menu. But borders and shading let you come in here and say, okay, this line here, sorry, that was right here, I could actually make it thicker. Then I make it thicker, I click it again, click OK, and it's much thicker. So anyway, I think that should give you just enough to get started on how you play with sort of manual text editing, how you can cut, copy, paste, use the format painter to pick up a text style that you like and apply it somewhere else, how you could use bulleted items, and so on. So thanks for sticking with me, and I hope this was helpful to you.